What's up, Taiwan? I'm Erica Liu with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan and the Pacific Island nation of Nauru have ended diplomatic relations. The two countries established diplomatic ties in 2005. The news comes two days after Taiwan's presidential elections, which saw ruling DPP candidate Lai Qingde win. Taiwan now has only 12 remaining diplomatic allies. To dig deeper into what the loss of relations with Nauru means for Taiwan, our reporter Joyce Deng spoke with Yan Chen Shen, a professor of international affairs at National Zhengzhi University. Now that Nauru has broken diplomatic ties, Taiwan is at a historic glow with just 12 allies. How big of an impact does Nauru leaving have on Taiwan's foreign affairs? Uh, a, a country like Nauru, so small in the Pacific Island, probably can be explained away, but this will not be able to explain the, away the fact that we have lost 10 diplomatic allies since Tsai Ing-wen took office and since Lai Qingde already pledged to continue to toy the line of Tsai Ing-wen, I don't think there will be any dialogue or interaction with Beijing, we will continue to lose diplomatic ally. But I didn't expect it come so fast. In just a few hours later, you learn about Nauru. But this, I think, is what China has worked on before the election, uh, but just waiting for the result of the election. So it can, you know, use that to uh, maybe making a statement about uh, you know the, the the reaction of Beijing is a continuation of poaching Taiwan's diplomatic ally since uh, we have elected a DPP government. China has been trying to increase its influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Do you think China establishing ties with Nauru shows Beijing's strategic interests there, or is it really just about Taiwan? I don't know whether China is trying you know, to make a statement of just like they are trying to uh, uh, get uh, Switzerland or Eswatini to their side so that have, you know, a complete sweep of the African continent. Do they have complete sweep of the Pacific Island in mind? I'm not sure. But strategically, Nauru is not as important. But the more important thing is uh, it does uh, represent uh, that Australia, the country, the, the power in the region, uh, cannot stop or cannot keep uh, the Pacific Island country from moving to Beijing side, just like the U.S. cannot stop the Latin American uh, ally of Taiwan to switch uh, diplomatic recognition. You mentioned Taiwan losing many of its allies under DPP presidencies, and now that Lai Qingde has secured a historic third straight term for the party, what do you see being the worst case scenario for Taiwan's diplomatic relations? Worst case scenario is we will have probably a single digit of diplomatic allies. Our government has, to me, they have anticipated this. So in the past few years, I can see that we have uh, uh, moved on to, to more important uh, substantial relations with non-diplomatic allies. But without the diplomatic allies uh, in the Caribbean or Central America, uh, our president cannot even have a transit stop in the U.S. Then we would truly be isolated. That was Joyce Zeng speaking with Yan Chen Shen, international affairs professor at National Zhengzhi University. China has officially reacted to the election of DPP candidate Lai Qingde as Taiwan's next president. But as Rosie Greninger explains, residents in China are hopeful for peaceful cross-strait relations. Two days since Taiwan elected Lai Qingde of the Democratic Progressive Party to rule the nation, China is reaffirming its claim on the country. Avoiding taking aim directly at the DPP, which is taking an unprecedented third term in power, Beijing is warning Taiwan not to push for independence saying its One China principle is a solid anchor for peace across the Taiwan Strait. But on the streets of Shanghai and Hong Kong, more optimistic views of collaboration. 
我觉得可能短期就很难再恢复到一个另外一个 level 吧，但是我觉得应该也不会特别恶化，可能在紧张相对更加紧张的呃环境下，然后再探探讨另外一种平衡。那即将到了，在都准备在和平区来来搞。Taiwan depends heavily on trade with China, and Lai has been making efforts to soften his earlier stance for independence. Knowing he has to find a way to work with the country's cross-strait neighbour without upsetting the status quo, I think uh, uh, the uh, basically the uh, uh, policy, foreign policy, cross-strait relations will remain the same. But it, it very much depends upon Xi Jinping's attitude, I would say. But with President-elect Lai, Beijing's least preferred choice, vowing to safeguard Taiwan's democracy. The Chinese leader's attitude towards the island nation may not be so diplomatic. Ryan Wu and Rosie Greninger for Taiwan Plus. There is disappointment in all three of Taiwan's big political parties over the results of Saturday's election, where no party won a legislative majority. John Ventriest has this story. For Taiwan's biggest opposition party, it's a time to reflect on what went wrong. Though the Kuomintang, or KMT, made big gains in the legislature, it failed to win a majority in Saturday's election. It also failed to win the presidency, giving the ruling Democratic Progressive Party a historic third term. As the party's presidential candidate, Ho Yui, bows out and leaves the stage, some KMT supporters are now finger-pointing. Their target is party chair Eric Zhu. But the KMT isn't the only party reflecting. The Taiwan People's Party is also thinking about how to move forward. This emerging party still wants to be a viable third force in Taiwan's politics, breaking the two-party system. It did pick up some seats in the legislature, but these were all special seats that don't have a fixed district. In every regional race, its candidates lost. And even the DPP, with its unprecedented third presidential term in a row, is disappointed. It only won the presidency with 40 percent of the vote. And it lost its legislative majority. Taiwan is set to have no majority in its one-chamber legislature for the first time in 20 years. Analysts say the DPP also has some hard thinking to do. 很明显的，这次民进党可能流失一半的一个连续选选票到柯文哲那边去了。其他的政党对民进党种种的一些批评，好，以及说民进党执政所呈现出来的一个问题，我想民进党必须要好好去做一个重新的一个检讨。With no party winning a resounding mandate, it's also time to see whether these three blocks can build coalitions, or whether Taiwan will face political stalemate. James Lin and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Prominent democracy leader Shi Mingde has died aged 83 after years of battling cancer. Known as Taiwan's Nelson Mandela, Shi spent over a quarter of his life in prison for defying Taiwan's authoritarian Kuomintang regime. Shi served one term as the Democratic Progressive Party's chair. He later split from the party in protest of corruption in the government of then President Chen Shui bian. Shi leaves behind a legacy as one of Taiwan's most prominent fighters for freedom, equality, and human rights. A fishing boat went up in flames off Taiwan's northeastern coast, with a crew jumping into the ocean to escape the blaze. The boat was off Elan's Turtle Island, with a thick pillar of smoke visible from the coast. The two crew members were pulled from the water by the Coast Guard, but their vessel was unsalvageable. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. A volcano has sent lava flowing into a town in Iceland, setting houses on fire. The lava flow started pouring into the fishing town of Grindavik after two nearby fissures opened. The whole town has been evacuated and there are no reported casualties. It's the second time the volcano has erupted in less than a month. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Finally today, we leave you with this footage of a traditional mass wedding ceremony in Ethiopia. I'm Erica Liu. Take care and see you next time.